I'm going to be presenting today an overview of uh, the Nigeria and the Ghana markets and their various performance, economic performance on both. First, I want to talk about Night Frank and uh, we'll look at uh, the economic performance of each of those countries and we'll look at the real estate from residential, retail and uh, office plus uh, the hospitality problem. Then we'll take over the conclusions of my project. Right? Share here. Real Estate Market Updates on Nigeria and Ghana by Frank Okusun. My content, like I said, we're going to talk briefly about Night Frank, uh, the economic performance and the real estate performance. Then we have our conclusions. Who are we? We are, we are charter surveyors and we have offices all over the globe, 48 offices in 57 territories and over 20,000 people. What are services? We were into global capital markets, commercial agency, valuations and advisory, then real estate strategy and consultancy. And we're also in African research. Economic performance. The economy of Nigeria and Ghana are two parts. First, Nigeria is the biggest and largest economy in West Africa, followed by Accra, which is the second largest, who has the second largest economy. The inflationary rate, we all see what is happening in the globe now, especially in Nigeria and in Ghana. For the 14th consecutive months, since August 2019, it has been rising. You can see my inflation rates in the graph below, up to 14.23%. Why Ghana has declined for the first time. There has been a contraction too in their inflationary rate for the third consecutive month. In our GDP growth, like what Sir Andrew was saying today, Nigeria has declined. Only the beginning of this week, we saw the contraction, 3.362% in quarter three this year. Officially, we are now in recession. When I was writing this report, we we're not in the recession then, but I knew we we're sliding to recession. For now, officially, the government has announced for the second time in five years. And they came up yesterday and said, we're going to exit in the first quarter of next year. Let's see how they played out. If, if, we, have the, if we have the GDP growth that is declined and there's output, let's see how that was going to work for us. For Ghana, it has declined too for the first time in quarter two in this year. That's for the first time in four years. You can see what our inflation is saying. 14.23 percent, while Ghana in 10.1 percent. Both have similarities in the economy. With the economic performance in my graph, we can see the GDP growth. The GDP growth has contracted minus 3.62 in Nigeria, then in Ghana minus 3.2. We could see the similarity in both GDP growth in the economy, the various economy. Let's look at the real estate contribution to GDP. In Nigeria, what is it telling us? 5.58 as that is yet. In Ghana, we could see what is giving us 2.7. We see the similarity. What of construction contributions to GDP? We could see what's telling us in Nigeria, 3.21. What is happening in Accra? We could see it, my, my 2.7, uh, 10 point, minus 
So let's move to the real exit performance. Let's see the residential exits. What is our population? Nigeria has conservatively, let me say conservatively, 200 million people. What is our home ownership for that 200 million people? 25%. <laughs> strong deficit position. Very, very strong. Housing deficit, 22 million. See the population of Ghana, 31 million individuals with home ownership rates of about 47.2%. They've played us out in home ownership. The housing deficit is just 1.7 compared to what we have, 22 million. So Nigeria has a lot of work to do for us to be able to close that gap in the hazard sector. Where are these prime residential locations? Ikolebi, Lagos, Abuja, and Port Harcourt. Those are the prime residential areas. Ghana is Accra, Kumasi, and Takorati. The major developers, let's take the major developers that are playing very big things that we feel they could increase, that could reduce our deficit to some level of extent. Eco Atlantic. Who are the developers of such energies? The location is Lagos. They have about 1,000 hectares and they have mixed use, residential, retail, office, and industrial. Start date has been 2008, and it's ongoing. It's been financed by PPP and debt and equity. The government must come in for us to be able to reduce these things because they are putting the infrastructures themselves. And that's why since the start date, since 2008, these are private developers. Let's come to Ghana, Polina City. Who are the developers? Still British company, Redevo. They've been doing a lot of work too in Nigeria, in Adelaro City as well. The location in Ghana is in Accra. And what is the size? About less than, less than 1,000, 930 hectares. And they want to reduce again the housing deficit in Ghana. They are bringing in 25,000 housing units. And every other day, with our research and statistics reports, about 20,000 people, they go there for inquiries on how they could own the home. We have about 20 acres of industrial park to reduce traffic that has been on there. And they have about 12 acres CBD. Start date is slightly earlier than what Eco Atlantic is doing in Nigeria. That was 2007. End date, no date is still ongoing. Still financed by the same PPPP and debt and equity. What's our real estate in which is saying? Nigeria has an estimated 50 million consumers. And it's still increasing, but the population drives for which it demands. There's a lot to pay in this aspect. In Ghana, the former retails are only defined by a few malls. Who are those people? They're fully really anchored by the South Africans. They are the main retailers in Accra. But in Nigeria, the neighborhood shopping centers had gained traction in most parts. Is in the Lekki, is in the Keja. We find the likes of Glenco, Ebanos, and the Rex. They're going crazy. And it helps the residents as well, especially with insecurity going on everywhere. So the closer the neighborhood shopping, the better for you as well. In Ghana, there's pressure on rents, resulting cancellations of most of the rental leases because of escalations. In Nigeria, there's been a delivery framework. It's been the main cities and it's continuously going. Destructions all over the cities. It's in Abuja, it's in Port Harcourt. Most of the retailers, most of the big malls, most of the smaller malls are opening. Or in Ghana, there's growing retails 
and in Kumasi and Takoradi, there began to be some development in those neighborhoods. From our statistics, when we go back to the graph, we see we show you the retail stocks. What, what is the average prime? It's about $85 per square meters monthly. And what's the yield? The prime yield of about 90 cents. Accra has a basket, but now with what has happened in the market, if you have half of this with the city tenants, you play with it so that the model don't, don't get don't get vacant. In Ghana, the average rent, the prime rent of those is about seventy dollars monthly. In prime yields, about seven point five percent. But I can guarantee this rent with what has gone on down, the rent will come up. Let's look at our stock in those areas. For the for 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 two thousand from two thousand and fifteen, what do we have? We have about one fifty, averagely one fifty thousand. 2016, about 193,000. 2017, about 265,000. 2018, we have about 303,000. 2019, we had about 30,000. In 2020, because of what has happened, the stock still remains what is with the pandemic in Nigeria, with the NSAs of recent, no more activities on retail stocks. on on the growth there. Same with Accra. In 2015, you had about 104. In 2016, you have the same thing. In 2017, you have 122,000 net growth in stock, but they'll increase in 2019 with about 131,405. Then in 2019, they were about 142,405. With the pandemic, with what has happened too in 2020, you see, the stock still remain where it is. So, with what has gone on, we'll see what the market will come back to. Let's talk about the office real estate. Lagos and Abuja, they're the one that played host to most of the grade A offices. All the grade A offices of the likes are in Lagos and Abuja. There's no other states that would say it has a grade offices more than Lagos and Abuja in Nigeria. Ghana, where you can find such things only in Accra and is only in the rich city area and the airport city. But in Nigeria, there's a lot of oversupply in the market and the vacancy rates have remained high. In Ghana, same as happened for a few of the great A offices they have. It has declined as well. In Nigeria, there's still a lot of home coming up. From first towards on Kingsway Road, on Aferewane Road, upon completion, we add another 55,000 square meter to the letable office space in Nigeria, adding to the stock of the oversaturated one. In Ghana, the Ottagon place, it has about 36,000 square meters of another letable floor space, which is the largest in the city in Ghana, in Accra. You can see what is happening in both cities, in Ghana and in Nigeria. Most of the great offices, who are the takers? They are most of the foreign companies. With what is happening in the markets, with the pandemic, most of the movement of with what is happening in the oil sector, and no takers. Who are the players in both cities, in Ghana and in Nigeria? They are the oil and gas. See what is happening in the exchange market. There are no more influx again from the FDI. What is the average rent now? Years back, we're going crazy for a thousand dollars per square meter. In Nigeria, for some time, check most of the green buildings. Uh, they will ask even the seven eighty dollars we're putting here. For now, what is happening? If you have half of this, if they offer five hundred dollar per square meter to next door or to some other buildings in Nigeria, they will gladly take. 
the civic towers, there's been there's been vacancy in the civic towers. You see the new green building coming up in Glover Road. It gives about nine percent. Check what is happening in Ghana. Prime rent, average prime rent is about four eight dollars annually. We prime it is about eight point three percent. If you get to fifty dollars in most of these great eight properties, the owners will gladly take. Let's check the graph of the stock we have for most of the grade A offices in Nigeria. An average of from 2010, we had about 29,000. In 2012, we had about roughly about 122,000. In 2014, we had about 23, 200 and roughly about 24,000. In 2016, about 252,000. In 2018, we had about 20,000. In 2020, we have about 310,000. Included to what the FAMPA is doing, that gives us, we'll be going crazy to about another 400,000 stock in the market. We are the takers. Look at that graph. Accra in 2010, we had roughly about 11,000. In 2012, about roughly about 21,000. 20, 21,000 in the market. In 2014, about 28,000. In 2016, about 115,000. In, 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 in 2018, about 167,000. In 2020, about 175,000 grade eight office stocks. What we entice the investors with borrowed funds having these stocks? or let's get out of this pandemic we are. Time we shall, and let's see how we play it by next day. The hospitality real estate. Lagos is the most visited city in sub-Saharan Africa. This is according to MasterCard Global Cities Index. It is not from me, Night Frank. Lagos, well, not to talk of Abuja, not to talk of all that cities, but Lagos. We knew what happened during this pandemic. All the airports were closed, no flights. Will they have evacuations? Before us were leaving. Akratu has been the key driver of growth in Africa's Latin markets. They rank for in terms of profitability. What has happened? When there is no movement, when there is no tourists, when the when the, the iron gas people are not flying. Fox might join most of their sites in all their transactions. In Nigeria, from statistics reports, Nigeria Transcorp Hotel in Abuja lost an average of about a billion every other month to the pandemic. You can easily confirm this. In Ghana, same problem, almost $200 million due to the same pandemic. Hospitality has been the highest big hit. Most hotels now have been given into short letter. Large corporations, most offices, most workers, you keep them during the during the pandemic, most of the transactions were, most of the offices were saying, let's have 20 rooms, 50 rooms in a hotel with all the gadgets, with all the internet connectivity. They live and work in there. That's how most of the offices have turned most of the hotel to now. In Ghana, oil and gas 
infrastructure, finance, telecom sectors, they are the driver of the South East Africa. But they are not there again. You will find them. As we say, speak, people are still developing these things. Most of the hotels are still under the pipeline. In Nigeria, we have about 49 hotels under development of this pipeline. From 2013 to date, we turn pipeline numbers of rooms number from 6,000 to 7,000 and to 9,000 in 2020. Check that of Ghana. From 2013 to 2020. How do we revamp this? Or let's there's impacts, there's solutions to the pandemic. We're speculating the second wave is almost here. But we're not taking responsibility. We're impacting as if there's nothing happening. Most countries we're expecting investments from, they are locked down again. How many times most of the flights, most of the businessmen are coming from abroad to Nigeria? Europe is closed. America is closed. Some airline can't fly in there. They can't come into Nigeria again. Now. There's Christmas. The government is telling us no travel, travel bans, so that you can be able to take responsibility of the COVID. When there's no transactions, they're not going to be business. It's the well exchange market is going to be hit. Let's look at what we've just put in place. And let's take a conclusion of those things of what we've just discussed. Lagos and Accra real estate market remains resilient with indications on fraud and capacity to rebound on the COVID as it was in Ebola. Ebola happened and in not just time, we got out of it. Same we are predicting we have been with COVID. There will be a game changing. In Q1 next year, if governments are sincere and they're telling us the truth that we're going to exist in Q1 next year, let them give us the statistics. Let, us, let them tell us how it's going to work. Because the real estate investors and the financiers are going to go into close closet and rethink and re-strategize how we put our funds in it. The hospitality and the entertainment segments will likely be the laggards. It will be difficult for them to come out of this for now. Let's not deceive ourselves. But the residentials will continue to leave the park because people will look for bigger accommodations, more secured environments, good gated communities. Because there's a lot of threat and security. We saw what happened during the enter in Nigeria. Places that were for medium, no, they were all destroyed. But nothing happened in Koi. Nothing happened in more communities. Lucky was, was ravaged. They were threats to some people, to some, some residents, both in mainland and all. Same with Takra. So people are looking for big accommodation, more secure environment. They want to restrategize, they want to rework their security. The sources of the retail real estate is restructured by local manufacturing and investments in renting brands due to rising inflation and exchange rates. We should make more, make more of the foreign investments go less desirable. Most of the mall you see today, most of the shopping mall, most of the retails are being patronized by our own products. Because nobody wants to buy, use $1,000 or so. At what rate? 
that will only give credibility to the ritual, to the rituals. But the office market, let's look at the potential for resumption for next year activities. If these great offices are going to leave markets, because there have been a lot of cancellations, not just due to their faults, or due to the economy. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope I've not bored you too much. These are a few picks for what the Lagos, Nigerian market, and Accra market is talking about. Thank you very much.